welcome to Cinemania. Today it is Tuesday, May something. I don't, you know, wherever, whatever we're doing, who knows. Um, and today I'm giving a tribute to the incredible and amazing actress, Mary Warrenov, um, because the three films I watched over the last couple days all featured Mary Warrenov. I was watching um, the film Nomads, the John McTiernan film, and while I was watching it, she plays one of the nomads, the Inuwa, which is a whole thing I can't even get into. There's there's some there's some things in that movie, um, but I was I was uh, along with Adam Ant, and I was watching it, and I was going, huh, this is interesting. I wonder, you know, what are the other Mary Warrenov like '80s films that I love. Now, I'm a big fan of hers because of Paul Bartel's films, um, because of, you know, scenes from the class struggle in Beverly Hills, which a friend of mine told me to watch and I'm obsessed with and put on all the time, uh, which is a Paul Bartel film, as I probably already mentioned, and Eating Raul, which is another Paul Bartel film. Um, they also both feature Robert Beltran, who is also in Night of the Comet, which basically I realized I was watching a Mary Warnov film set in California and kind of went, I wonder what other films of hers I haven't seen. Now, I haven't seen Chelsea Girls. You know, she's famous for, you know, being affiliated with Warhol. Warhol? Oh my gosh, today. Today is happening. Today is happening and I have not talked enough yet today, so I need to get that under control. Um, but she, you know, she's famous for Chelsea Girls and, uh, and Paul Bartel's films, and you know, later, I, I think I first encountered her in The House of the Devil, the Ty West film, which I just adore, and I saw a screening with a bunch of the cast there once when I lived in Los Angeles, um, but I don't think she was there, but I can't remember, but looking back, I'm like, I would have died, but Tom Noonan was there, so that was, <sighs> but still my heart. Um, so yeah, so I basically watched Nomads, uh, with Pierce Brosnan, and it's his first film. It's also full frontal Brosnan. It's kind of dark, but hello. Um, which was his first film, pre-Bond, kind of coming out of Remington Steel, wanting to do something different. He has a wild French accent in it. Um, and also stars Leslie and Down, who is in one of my favorite, really freaked me out films from my childhood called Sphinx, which has Frank Langella and um, I can never remember how to pronounce his name. I really should know that. Um, and John Rice davies and John Gilgood, and it's freaky, but I would highly recommend it. It's a fun film. When I was younger, I was very obsessed with Egypt um, and archaeology. So, yeah, Sphinx, that's one I would highly recommend if you've never seen it. It's kind of hard to track down, um, but I think it's probably streaming somewhere. I mean, I'm guessing you can find it somewhere, but it's... It's, it's one of those, I think it's rated PG, maybe PG-13, and it's like, it's shocking. Um, or at least it was when I was a kid, maybe it's not as shocking. It's been a little while since I've seen it, but I remember watching it as an adult and it was still pretty. Anyway, Nomads. Um, Nomads is wild. It's the John McTiernan film um, that basically got him Predator um, and then kind of started his career and then the descent of his career is very fascinating if you want to read all about it. Um, he also famously directed what I call one of the sexiest films of all time, which is the Thomas Crown Affair remake. It's also one of the best remakes of all time, I would say, along with Cape Fear, um, because it understands what it's doing and it transposes the original material perfectly. And you know, if you're gonna if you're gonna do a movie that features an iconic sexy chess game and then just make it sexy in a totally different way, set it in the art world, and just have those hot, hot sex scenes with Pierce Brosnan and Rene Russo. I look forward to the day when we have hot, hot sex scenes again. Um, anywho, so Nomads. Um, Nomads is baffling. I mean, it is bizarre, but it's also kind of fascinating in a, in a way that it kind of has a feeling similar to the keep I would say, in an odd way, which seems like a very strange comparison, but there was just something about it. It almost feels like it could be Michael Mann adjacent. Um, but yeah, I would probably give it two out of five <sighs> bloody whispers. <laughs> um, 
I don't know what to tell you on that one, but, but it is a film that I think I could watch again and again and probably fall in love with more and more now that I've seen it and kind of went, okay, this is what this is. It's about a French anthropologist who, um, and his doctor, which is that whole thing, and then uh, their, they encounter real life nomads, or not that there aren't nomads in real life. Anywho, we're gonna move on past nomads, but basically, Mary Warnov has a has a has a part in it, and I was like, what other Los Angeles movies, specifically kind of horror or horror comedy, was she in that I have not seen? So then I watched Night of the Comet, um, which one of the stars is Kelly Maroney, who is also in Chopping Mall, which is the third movie that I watched this week. Um, and Night of the Comet also has Robert Beltran in it uh, from Eating Raul and Scenes from the Class Strong on Beverly Hills. I'm repeating myself a lot during this video, but we're just gonna go with it. And if you're already this far and you're still watching, then okay. Um, Night of the Comet is a lot of fun. It's something I had never seen before. Um, and it is delightful. I have a soft spot in my head for, and in my heart, I don't know why in my head, um, for those 80s horror, it's just a lot of fun. Like Night of the Comet is a fun, fun movie. Um, I would give it, four out of five uh, bags of human dust once a human is eliminated by the comet. It's kind of hilarious. It's kind of, and you know, it's also funny because that and Chopping Mall, which I'm just about to talk about, uh, also kind of play with the idea of making fun of American consumerism, especially in the 80s, which is great. And then of course I watched the Jim Wynorski film, uh, Chopping Mall, which I've, seen Chopping Mall in a million pieces many, many, many times, but I don't think I've ever seen it the whole way through, straight through, until about yesterday. Um, a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Also, all those 80s guys were hot. Um, they just were. Uh, that one guy is still really hot. Uh, the guy on Instagram. I digress. <laughs> but uh, Mary Warnoff is also in that. Mary Warnoff in Night of the Comet plays a scientist, um, with kind of nefarious or not so nefarious intentions, depending on the outcome of that film. And then Chopping Mall is, <sighs> well, she and Paul Bartel basically just show up in the very beginning scenes <laughs> and just make commentary, which I would have loved to be in the room when Jim Wynorski or whoever pitched them was just like, hey, we need you two to just show up and kind of mock all this at the beginning. But, um, Chopping Mall, Killer Robots, a lot of fun. Uh, five out of five people all having sex in the same room, which was apparently a thing that teenagers did in the 80s. Do they still do that? I don't, they probably do. That's probably normal, right? I just, a friend and I were watching it once and she was like, wow, just everyone, just all in the same room. And you're like, okay. Um, yeah, or, a, or, uh, yeah, that's, that's all I got. Um, happy Tuesday, everyone. Mary Warnoff, she's incredible. If you don't know her work, just hunt it down. Watch it. Watch anything with her in it. Delightful. We love you, Mary Warnoff.